is, is a fact that's on this. Let's go into the bands of picture game number three, please. Bring them up here for me, Jared, and save me from myself. Cryptic, they're going to be in the first pick spot. Armada are going to be the second. He's making fun of me in my head. I am a I'm firm ignoring. believer <laughs> that winning multiple games with go multiple ahead. Boombas go ahead. is an assertion of dominance. Does that have independent merit and or value? I don't think it does. I don't know, bitch. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out here. But we're still going to see it. Merlin Jormungandr banned out. King Arthur banned out by Armada as well. So far, things are fairly normal. Freya banned too. That means Shibalanki can still come through for Diesel. It has been one they've been prioritizing. I don't know why they wouldn't go back to that one here again. The question is, though, how much do they want to try and respond to Armada? Let him have the... Oh, they take the Naja. Okay. This is already the response to Armada. Gino has had this okay. Naja two games in a row now. Oh, look good. Excuse me, not Gino. Oh, Homie played it in the it first up. one. Mm -hmm. So I should correct myself on that. But either way, Armada having control of the Naja, I think, is a heavy early game influencer. And Cryptic, obviously, the wanting to be uh, the more controlling team in that jungle space. They're taking Chernabog over Chibalanka in this spot as well. Chernabog can certainly be strong. He's got some viability if you want to do double hunter as well, and maybe you can throw him mid or long. I like this idea, but it does mean that you're giving Diesel a pick that he can play pretty comfortably. He doesn't want it though. Jingwei coming through for Cryptic. Agro already touched on it earlier today in, uh, in a European set, but, but Chernabog is a, a criminally underplayed hunter right now. Oh, I good. think that that ability to have global assistance at just a simple press of a button is pretty darn good and, and Armada know it so having the Achilles in the Trinobog that is fairly aggressive early game already I think the Mercury is going to continue to add on to that global aspect we just touched on with the Trinobog so tons of mobility already underway here for Armada between these two they can get to a fight rather quickly the Trinobog and the Mercury and like you said Trinobog doesn't even have to go to the fight if Shibalanka is like a global blind then Trinobog can be a global slow for your team and get those stacks going and slow everyone else who's running trying to run away so so definitely could be a strong pick in its own right as the Susano and the Poseidon are banned out. Cryptic pick the raw, ban the Poseidon, try to limit some of Meerkat's options going in this next game. Seems as though Diesel would also prefer to have the Jingwei, maybe feeling as if Armada was too easily able to collapse him on that Shibalanke. So yeah. while Darkest Knights is an ideal team fighting ultimate, at the end of the day, you probably want survivability instead so you can even have those team fights to begin with. And I think Jingwei can do just that for Cryptic. I'm a little bit surprised about this Ah Posh ban here, Taco. We're taking that one off the table as Zeus comes through. So, hey, a big burst of mobile mage was the plan. It was just Zeus for Armada here instead. Yeah, but have you thought about Al Posh with Shield of Regrowth and Boomba's <laughs> Mask? Because He'd I can be assure fast. you it works, and he is going to be moving. He would indeed be difficult to catch up with as Zeus comes through. Thor is going to be the plan for Team Cryptic. So maybe that's the idea. Try and keep up with some of this rotational ability from Turnabog and Mercury. And then whatever Baskin plays, you assume it will be very fast. And maybe the Thor dunk can catch up to it. Well, Cryptic haven't bothered with banning out the Kronos. So Why would they? I mean, I don't think they really feel particularly <laughs> threatened by Baskin on that god choice. Maybe mm -hmm. Cryptic also understanding that they might have been investing a little bit too much into chasing Baskin as opposed to just looking to punish the other lanes of Armada, but that's going to be tough to do. I, I do feel like Armada just has so much AoE damage right Let's now that outside of the Kuzumbo, the I'm not one. sure how Cryptic really affords to get up close and personal. It could be tough for them to try and close in. I mean, who's going to be the one that whose job it is to dive out of the Zeus? If he has beads, Thor might be signing his own death warrant by crashing in with that ultimate on top of the lightning storm. As Fafnir comes in, that means it is indeed going to be the Achilles going over to Baskin, and he shouldn't have much problem going fast with that pick. You should not at all, Finch, and I'm really interested to see how Cryptic plans on answering back. It's not going to be easy for them. This will be game number three to close everything out. Armada dropped in game one, Cryptic dropped in game two. Let's find out who it is in game three. Thanks so much, Finch and Taco. God, I wish we could have just stayed with those guys the whole way through because they're just nice to listen to. But more importantly, we've got this deciding match to show you. You're the boss. I mean, if you want them to come in and cast, they kind of have to. I mean, everyone has a boss, right? That's Everyone true. has a boss, you know? I don't think Jeff Bezos has a boss. <laughs> oh. Hi, Finch. Hey. How's it going? Oh. Hey, Hi, Taco. Oh, oh, you staying? You want us to stay, yeah, so I we mean, stayed. Let's yeah. form on this. Like a, let's go. Like we haven't reunion. done a four-man cast before, have oh, we? Oh, wait. Production's going to not like us doing this. Watch. They're oh, going to cut man. us off. I think production left them up by mistake, potentially. Let's no, go they, no, they were all about it. Nope. They made a mistake. No. Production, they... please. Spam it in chat. 
No, that's why? Be, no, they get punished for taking him away. That's what happens. But Gino trying to keep this support pressure going from game two. But this time, Cope is on the Kuzenbo, and the Kappa will force the sprint and call it a day. Yeah, Gino's been really okay with just getting no farm at the very beginning of the game. Mineral's doing the exact same thing on the other side, but he actually got the speed buff from Homie. So a better start for him, and now he's harassing him on the red as well. He's going to force him off of it. In fact, he got the beads away from Homie. Big play there for Mineral, and that's going to work out nicely to maybe look towards this red, but Gino and Mekai here closes the gap just Gino. Bit of double damage onto Mineral with the double dash available. Although Achilles is going to lose a bit of range this next year with the next patch. That's right. Is that going to hurt a lot, you reckon? Yeah, I, I think you'll feel it for sure. There's lots of times where you feel like you're out of that auto attack range and you really aren't. Every time it feels like it. You'll feel this one too. Ooh, red buff does go down in their favor, and Mineral is... No detonate, no detonate. Dead. Oh, the dash was not good from Gino but the attack after the fact was better. And so Gino continues to pressure. He's feeling confident now with how this game's going to try and get aggressive towards Zero here, force him to use the hammer back towards mid. A Thor! We don't see it that often anymore. No, we don't. And as you mentioned in game one of this set, especially for a guy who's from Europe playing on North American servers, that's a god that requires some pretty tight timing windows to get your auto attack cancels perfect. But did okay on the Susano. They won that game. So we'll see if he can do it again here. Well, I mean, you know, it's the region where... EU from. EU do well on Thor. The best players in the world play Thor from EU. I mean, you have adapting. That's all we need. What have you got? No one. Last good one was Andy. No, Gars. And that well, was before well, Andy. Andy. That was before Andy, you're right. <laughs> Gars, Gars at his highest level may be better than adapting. Oof. I don't know. Maybe. I'm not saying it was. Different saying. time period, you Definitely, know? Very That's different. like the 60s versus the 90s in difference. Very different. But Gar is dominated with Thor just just as just as uh, adapting did, man. It was, it was something else. Maybe we stop calling it season two, season three, and just go with like the 1920s or the 1930s for each season, right? So the 30s is season three. Well, Graham, I know, you're, I know you're old, but you're not that old. Like no. It just doesn't work. Out. It was a joke. This is, this is the game. Snoopy took a lot more damage than bargain for there. I'm surprised he's still hanging around here, expecting to see if he can continue that trade there. Chitterbug should have lane pressure overall with his clear. It's just a little bit more delayed, I guess. Yeah, in, in in the early game, it just doesn't full clear the wave, so it's going to take him a little bit longer. But yes, once Snoopy gets, gets a little bit closer to those level 6, level 7 marks, he basically full clears the wave. And it looks like Snoopy's actually going for the Mage's Blessing on him this time around. Snoopy's really a fan of this on gods like Chiron, but Turnabout's a bit different. Gina was wrapping around the back when the minion wave gave away that Gina was doing that, I think, and I don't think he realized it himself. So Mineral's gonna punish that. Meerkat now on Zeus. Ryan, complain. What is he supposed to do, man? I mean, he can't get away. It's ridiculous. And that's the life of a Zeus player all times of the game. In Princip, reality, though, off to a good start here. if Meerkat just doesn't use the shield right there, he waits for everyone to group up on top of Geno. He, like, triple kills them for the most part. I mean, he and Homie get to win that team fight even with Geno dying. Definitely, Meerkat has been much more about the Raw and the Poseidon. It was the first time I think we've seen him play the Zeus. So it, it takes, it's a different play style for sure. It takes a little bit. And with Zeus as well, more than likely with the build options, he'll go full boots and then we'll see the Rod of Tahuti, which is one of the only mid laners in the game that rushes Rod for the most part. Yeah, the way the reason that it works is because uh, Tyler, her and, her and Whitney does it. So it's got to be good. That's, that's the way that I feel. Um, being serious though, it, your early base damage is good enough that you don't really notice the fact that you're taking forever to build your second item. Sure. And then it's so core on Zeus and it works so well with the way his kit is that you want that passive no matter what. And if you get out of the way early, you can then start building some cheaper items for, for quicker power spikes as the game goes on. It's just that you're one through seven or eight. That's where you'd be finishing your rod is probably by level nine or ten. Is strong enough without having that extra power that you yeah. don't really notice. A lot of regeneration on that as well, which does play into the fact that it's useful. Although, I always look over ma majors and I'm like, is there anybody else that could really make good use of it? It's, there's no one really, is there? I mean, obviously it's all to do with the detonate is the reason you get it. Yeah, you get the below half with yeah. before with the rest of your kit and then detonate finishes it for you. Uh, Raijin is pretty good with it. That's true, yeah. Characters actually. that have their damage kind of stack up quickly, mm. but also a little bit over time. Basically, you want to have your abilities happen after they drop below 50% and then be almost an execute from there. That's why it's not that great on Scylla, because your Sikkim puts them to like 60%, and then your Crush puts them to 10%. So the Rod passive never really happens for you, right? From that point, you're either killing them with a monster or yeah. you're missing. 
So Rod doesn't really matter to you that much. Mineral and Sops hanging out at Armada's red buff and zero to the sky. Geno's heard that for sure, but I don't think the boys realize how far forward he could get. Nice Homie, FA pinned in place by the wall, but the sonic boom gets him away from danger. Min Makeup picks up the kill on Mineral, and Geno takes down zero. It's a 2 and 0 exchange in favor of Armada. And I thought Geno was going to keep on aggressing there, but Diesel just gets away. Great ultimate from Sops actually hit Meerkat and Homie in that fight, but. Just a good ultimate for Meerkat at the same time in a small, grouped up, narrow area of the jungle. And that's where Zeus has nothing to complain about, baby. That's that's where it feels really good to be playing this character. Nicely done by Meerkat. Nice to see a Fafnir in the solo lane. Wait, that was sarcasm. Sobs <laughs> back towards the tower in mid. Is Homie Effie going to clear up the purple buff on the left-hand side and go towards the black carp? He's currently level 5, but has the Hasting Katana online. What happened to Golden Bow? Is that just not a thing as much anymore? It, the fact that it doesn't interact with your one makes it feel a lot worse. It can be okay. Sure. Still for Mercury, you see gods like Vakasura and Arachne buying it a lot in order to set themselves up for success and not have to use a lot of mana in order to clear the jungle camps. You can build it on Mercury. It's fine. I like Hayes and Katana against team compositions where you can stick on people very easily, and that's certainly the case here. Ra and Naja, both once you start auto-attacking them, cannot really get away from you particularly easily. Both of them do so by slowing you. Naja with the ring toss, Ra with the two, but you just pop your second ability, maximum velocity, and you get that slow immunity, and you're good to go for homie face. So I like the I like the hasten here. Both supports with the Talonia boots too. We've been talking a lot about movement speed being the order of the day at the moment. Divine Light being hovered over at the moment, but Zero in the mid lane, gonna use his ultimate, get the beads out of Meerkat. Meerkat will walk away. And the double tap connection from Zero, but just not enough damage. And Sops is doing his best Meerkat impression, but not as good as Meerkat, because Meerkat lands though. Sonic Boom lands onto Sops after the fact. That gets the bead, spin to win to return the damage. Homie FA runs away. Zeus will drop down to help out Mineral on the backside, take damage onto Snoopy. Snoopy gonna get the kill on Mineral because of that. And now Diesel wrapping round two, but Diesel gonna find out there's only four members of Armada around the area. The Chernabog ultimate coming up clutch yet again. I've been, I've been singing the Chernabog praises recently, man. Oh, yeah. It's been working really, really well every time we've seen it. Diesel, though, still taking a fight against two here. Good damage overall there onto not Gino, but not enough to bring him down at all. And Diesel forced to use his ult and beads defensively at the end of the day after making that rotation. The jungle buffs are coming back up for Cryptic on that left hand side as well. Awkward situational time. Yeah, it's still okay for, for both Chick sides. Right, I guess, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're going to be back in time. Minerals there, coming back from his respawn. It has both kills for Cryptic so far, but also three out of their four deaths. You mentioned that Shadow Bug as well. Like you've been singing the praise. I think really from Arkill's Pentakill at Worlds yeah. is the moment where I think a lot of the talent team, at least the casters, have been like, you know what? He's actually pretty good. And I, I don't know why we're not seeing so much of him. Yeah, specifically this year. I mean, the, the 1v1 matchups, yeah. The 1v1 matchups, you get to affect the lane really well and elsewhere on the map pretty easily. He, he's still he's still pretty strong, definitely less popular than he used to be. Yeah. But I think we're gonna start seeing more of him. Snoopy's been a long time fan of this character, so it doesn't surprise me that he's pulling it out. Actually, it's just a dash into the wall is actually really impactful because it lasts a long time in the wall too. Yep. You, it buys you about the same amount of time as a Rama ult would, as in waiting for your teammates to help, I'm gonna die, get here quick. And it's you can lose it sometimes in the midst yep. of a team fight. There's a lot going on. Gets you, gets you out of a lot of the, the nonsense. I mean, getting out of Cope's way as he's trying to knock you up with Watery Grave. That's going to help out for sure. Snoopy then going to clear the wave pretty effectively there. He's got a bit of a lead over Diesel at the moment, but obviously a whole wave down. Then we're going to head back to base, continue working on that Gauntlet of Thebes by the looks of it, whereas Gino going to go for the Black Thorn Hammer. Did take a bit of a nerf, but it's still a viable item. It definitely can be when you want just cheap HP. It's less HP than it used to be, of course, but 350, not bad. Not, not bad at all. You get your physical power as well. The passive, not super relevant in this in, no, in this character, tall. but it can be for characters like Guan Yu. It can, and I think the reason it's not effective here is just also because he's got Talaria boots in tow, right. which gives a ridiculous amount of mana regen anyway. And Guardian's Blessing, which gives you mana regen based off creeps dying near you. So you're going to have that 10% cooldown the whole time. Mm, similar idea for Mineral, but instead of getting something that has physical power and HP, goes in the same tree and goes for the Shield of Regrowth. Which is, uh, again, something that makes you move real quick. Sops took a ton of damage there from Gino, who just played that nicely to avoid damage in return. Diesel now trying to rotate round towards cryptic members in the middle areas. The red buff spawning. Armada were getting aggressive, but it stops them clearing the wave in mid that nearly gets aggressed on by Gino. Red buff secured by cryptic, and now cryptic back towards mid and gets caught in the choke point. 
Chino could get ulted from this position. Mineral has it. Ready to go, but Left decides side, not though. to. Snoopy going aggressive against Diesel, looking for the trade-off between the two. Not enough to find a kill yet, but enough time to delay the purple being done, and now Homie FA's on the rotation. But so are Mineral and Zero. That'll send Snoopy and Homie packing back to the wave, but Snoopy uses ultimate, gets right back into the fray, misses absolutely nothing. Overall, that's an acceptable use of the ult. Wall out from zero in mid. The double tap didn't find a home overall, just the single. A Meerkat dances in his ultimate and survives while his carry and solo, sorry, support and solo laner ends up doing the donkey's work of taking down his laid opposition. Oh, it isn't going to be the rod of Tahuti for Meerkat. So he's building straight into some pen. What, does he think he knows Zeus better than Heroin? What, hey, what is this? Maybe he's a little bit worried about Coke Baby, who's gone for some magical defense overall. Thing. Execute out from Gino on Mineral there. That's a big opportunity now for Armada to get this gold fury. Easy. Baskin here as well. AoE coerce. We take those every single time. Baskin's rotation. What don't you take? Because I hear you say we take those a lot. Yeah, I don't take... Um, Condiments. We know sand that. I was about to say sandwiches with mayonnaise. <laughs> I definitely don't take those. Um, burritos with sour cream. I don't take those. Oof, that's a bit awkward. Yeah, I can see it though. Um, yeah, basically just stuff like that. Ah. Chicken tenders with ranch, don't take those. Zero gets baited by Meerkat, the superior timing of Bax there. he know the window of how far Zero would have to throw the hammer to connect in the window of his recall. Funny enough, sound in this game is one of the most important things, and a lot of people don't realize it. Oh, I mean, play without sound for a little bit, you'll, you'll miss it. If you don't realize, watch Battle Sounds. We've got an episode of that pretty much every week. Our good lad John Finch produces the battle sounds with the pros every week, which is them showing their knowledge of the sounds of the game. And it's quite surprising to me how bad some of these pros are at it. You know who else is bad? John Finch. You want to know why? He robbed me of a win against Tolly. In what? Battle sounds. How did he rob you? Because did, he... Did Tolly get more right than you? No. Okay, so maybe you have a leg to stand on. That's why I wanted to start. With. Yeah, so no. I was like, well, are you going to tell me that Tolly He didn't said Sirket, th Tolly said Sirket 3. Right. But it was really Sirket 1, and Finch gave him the point, and okay. he beat me by 1. Okay. That's Finch's rules. It's Finch's game, though, right? Well, he, his rules are stupid, and so is he. Wow, it's a little bit far there. Afternoon on a Tuesday, and we're talking like that. Jeez. A bit rough. Diesel getting pressured by Gino as Zeno gets aggressive. Sorry, Zero gets aggressive onto Homie Efe and Snoopy at the same time. But Ho Snoopy and Homie Efe have left him all on, got him all on his own now. The rest of the team were too busy dealing with Gino, who somehow still doesn't die and gets away himself. Good ring toss though. Homie and Snoopy bounce that one back and forth. Diesel's able to clean up Homie as Cope finds Meerkat in the mid lane. Cope's popping still. Cope's not changed. It feels like to me he's still, even when he was in the jungle position, he was doing good things, and now he's back in the solo, making work for himself here. Sash from Mineral will help secure Gino finally, and Cope with the long old rotation. I thought he might have gone for the gank there, but smartly he's going to go for the bar. No blink or anything for him. He used that in order to get in in the mid lane. Looks like Meerkat died to the thorns. Watery grave, blink, Kuzinbo. What is Meerkat supposed to do against that, man? Nothing. Can't do anything about it. Definitely an awkward situation. Especially if you've got the thorns, like you said. Like, that just makes it even worse. Because yeah, you can't, can't even use Detonate. No, you can't use Detonate, can't use your ult. Can't really even use your wand. I love Kuzumbo. I don't. That's why. I know. It's the only reason. Lot also, of... next time, don't time give what? me your agreeable Englishman. About what? About fin me calling Finch's rules stupid. Because they are stupid. I mean... I, I don't know the whole pitch. I'm getting one side of the story here. If you've ever known anything about me, I may be slightly savage now and again. Yeah. But most of the time, my savageness is towards the person who's wrong. It's Finch. I don't know because I don't know the whole picture. He right? gave him a point I don't know. for saying the god correct instead of the ability correct. It's not battle sounds guess the god we're talking about. It's guess the ability. I think Finch is just being nice overall. Maybe that's what you don't consider, huh? Maybe Tolly was having a bad day. Maybe he needed to bring you down a peg or two. And that's how you bring down a Kuzumbo a peg or two. By sending the whole armada across to kill him. See what I did there? Puns. You like him? Yeah, it's Tuesday. Minorly. Doesn't mean anything. Let's go. <laughs> You're John Olivering me right now, and I don't know really how to handle it. I've been watching it. a lot about that, actually. The reason that's why. <laughs> Mineral getting low, and Homie does end up getting that kill. Execute on point for Gino as well. I just wanted to hear another Englishman. That's what the issue was. Yeah, hey, you, you, you could pick worse ones for sure. John Oliver is great. Nah. And so is Armada at this point. They're up 10 to 5, but the gold lead really not there too much.
My favorite thing about John Oliver is when his jokes fail and the audience don't laugh. Yeah, that does and happen. And you can see the about. death in his eyes, and it makes me giggle a little bit. Overall, that's what I, I feel want you bad for. for him, man. No, I don't. I don't want to be in that position. Because that just tells you you're not as funny as you think you are. Well, I'm sure it's not even it's him. It's never happened to me before, and that's why. Like, never. I just n not once. Wow. I've never felt like I've been in a situation where I'm like, oh, that wasn't as funny as I thought it was. <laughs> You've never had that happen. Don't before. think so. Wow. Maybe just now. No, I mean. No, not even close, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't. It wasn't funny, but it wasn't really attempting to be. So I guess it doesn't even count. There you go. That's the idea. I'm not actually ever attempted to be funny, so you can't be wrong. No, I've definitely heard you say things that you thought were funny that we did not get a big reaction out of. I'm pretty sure you've complained about it on our podcast. Uh, maybe. Maybe I'm just trying to get attention to the podcast by bringing that up. Sop's going to go down to Meerkat, but Meerkat going to go down to Zero as the mid laners up. trade out with their ultimates too. Baskin with the big plays with this Fafnir solo coming up clutch and taking out Zero. And now Homie FA finds out what body blocking's all about as Cup takes him down. Diesel with the air strike to escape Snoopy, but Snoopy's not done. Into the sky he goes and back down again just to run away. Just wants to get his dash back, of course, using Living Nightmare resets your cooldown, so needed to use that in order to get his dash back up. Good good job by Meerkat. He basically solos down, Sops in that position, but it was Sops who was baiting for zero. Zero just takes a little bit too long to get into position, and they do end up trading two for two, mid-jungle for mid-jungle. Basically a wash at that point. I guess that maybe someone got, may have gotten an extra assist on Armada or Cryptic. And that's who ends up coming out on top, but it's it's a razor thin margin. It's pretty much even off that. It's only about 2k gold lead for now for Amada, but the Oni Fury is available on the left hand side. Cryptic could have potentially looked at that with Diesel and Mineral being there, but they don't have full vision on where everybody on Armada is, so better safe than sorry. Homie FA back in action after that tumble there for the second time this game. And gone for the rage pickup. No real surprise, he is playing Mercury. Such a good late game option. And that's what you're playing to. As Mercury anyways, you just want to increase the consistency of your crits. You get to be in the middle of a lot of team fights because of your ultimate. So it doesn't take you too long to get reinvested in and back in and let yourself get some stacks. Gino wraps around the back of Diesel, gets a nice stun up onto him and avoids the gust as well. Zero goes to the sky now on this Thor, looking to try and secure the option of the escape and does so well. Spin to win after the fact is good and Sops lands the Wombo combo. That's the Lassus combo. There's no Wombo about it. It's just the last. Maybe I was calling Lassus Wombo. Why would you call him Wombo? I don't know. I'm making excuses, okay? So I'm still walking forward here, though, towards the red buff area. There's no red buff available. Actually, it's for zone, because the Yoni Fury is under threat. Keep an eye on Snoopy and Meerkat just waiting around the corner. It is a Zeus, after all, so watch out for that. But that's not going to be allowed here. Mineral takes one to the sky on landing. Meerkat's in trouble. The spin could be enough. Zero with the wall to stop Baskin from doing anything. Baskin does have an ultimate. I've not seen it yet, though. No, he hasn't used it yet. Maybe he'll jump this in is the and time, try and right? use it to steal it away. Homie's got his ultimate as well. This could be a good fight. If he steals this with a Fafnir ultimate, I'm done. There's no way. You just called out, like, maybe he uses it to try and steal him. I'm like, really? I mean, you can jump in. You, you can't take damage during it. Sure. Easy for you. But it's like a baby dot after you've done it. Like, that's all it's going to do. I mean, he's built some damage. Pen boots, void stone. Ashram mineral, wall after the fight didn't hit, but all the damage on Baskin is focused. Cope pushes him in the wall and eats a hammer. Now they're all slowed down. There There's the go. Baskin all turn around, and here comes the nuke. Big damage. Any day now coming from Baskin. And he's just going to keep on running. It probably needs to. Snoopy standing tall, though, off a big stun from Baskin. And not enough damage to finish off anybody oh. until Homie gets the job done. Gino, I thought, was on for a quadra there or two, especially with the little health bars, but his ultimate didn't fire the first target. Now he's chased onto Mineral, though. We'll pick that up as Snoopy goes aggressive onto Mineral to secure. Now with the chase on from the clones from the Chernobog ultimate, they know exactly where Diesel and Sops is. Just have to avoid some damage and keep this chase going. Diesel's completely out of mana. He does use the Aegis just in case. But here comes Cope right back for Gino. Sumo slams him right back under the tier two and gets an easy kill for Sops. The till is just too strong. I mean, Meerkat going to get some nice damage off, but take a bit of in response. Cope chipped down to about 40% health now as Sops just trying to make sure he holds his position. And they're not trying to do the fire giant is the main thing he's making sure of. He's got to be worried about it, though. I mean, no yeah. ward there. I, don't I think he's the last way he's gone back again, right? For Cryptic, yeah. Stop his own back. He's going to go pick up blue potentially, but once he hears the Pyromancer go down, that's enough to convince him that Armada isn't on the big objective. Armada winning this game so far. I mean, they're up in kills, up in gold a little bit. A couple of objectives too. Player damage-wise, not the greatest. Watch out. 
Watch out. Oh. Ooh, good beads. Gets him out of that ultimate, but will not save his life. Just wanted everybody at home to know that when he asked Meerkat watch out, it did help him avoid the sniper. Yeah, you're welcome. You didn't continue to say watch out. That's what the issue was there. Oh, I got to go with the full, like, watch out, watch out, watch out. You know, that, and then. Escalate it. You but, know? Then, but in the clip, the person who's getting told to watch out still gets RKO'd. Yeah. So it can't be that helpful. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Oh, my God, through the table. Yeah, perfect. It's classic. Perfect. Cope on the right hand side, though, level 17. His build is kind of what you expect. Lacking a little bit of health overall there, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit, but you're returning so much of the damage sure. anyways that you're not so trying to good. absorb a whole bunch. You're just trying to absorb the, the lightning storm damage and then turn it around. Meerkat doesn't have Soul Reaver yet, though it looks like he's working on it. So that lack of health does kind of help him that he's not getting big Soul Reaver procs on him, but does, I think, hurt him overall. And that he is going to feel a little bit squishier than he normally would. Plenty of prots, though, for That's Cope. And he's, an, and he's a guardian, so he has natural HP scaling. So he'll, he'll get enough, I'd say, in the build. Makes sense why Mick has gone into further penetration then before continuing his build if he's going to have to deal with targets like that. Cryptic, though, starting to group up around the fire giant, gets some walk control down. Laskin needs to double tap and a sash, but still leaps away. Diminishing returns are a yeah. thing, and that does add up a little bit there. Toxic Blade for Homie, not building into more crit from that position. He's a little bit more auto attack based with the Hasten Katana and the Stone Cutting Sword. Kind of keeps it going here. Toxic Blade does have movement speed, has health, has penetration, has attack speed. It's a, it's a bunch of just a good stats that aren't power, but he may not need it too much and just wants to try and stick on it. But this is the reason why the Chernobyl could be so strong. He's able to split push here, Snoopy, get the tier one. It's forcing Cryptic to commit to a fire giant, knowing that Snoopy could come over at any moment, and here he is. But Mineral meets him with that ultimate right away. Diesel already deleted before he get the ultimate off. Homie takes care of him. He's gonna run back into the double tap, but doesn't matter for him. Sops. Is already gone. Cope trying to keep Mirka and Snoopy busy in the backside, but the rest of his damage oh. dealers are already dead. Cope did good work at solo in 2v1, 1v2, I should say, against Mirka, but it won't be enough to get away himself. It's a three for one exchange on Armada. Silly Mirka trying to turn around and like deal damage before he died. Can't be doing that up against the Kuzin bow, but this is a good opportunity for a fire giant still, even with only three members here. Baskin can help Snoopy out plenty, but instead they're going to try and go for the kills. Yeah, Fire Giant has been reset. Mineral is around the area. Mineral may need to sash onto Gino to help him out. Does so. Dash after the fact. Blocked by Zero, but Gino's got another dash, remember? That's yeah. Achilles for you. Who needs your basic attacks when you've got that range of your abilities? And Homie all the while is getting a tier 2 on the left-hand side, and they went right back towards fire, actually, here, Graham. I mean, they've got... Basket. Basket. And the damage dealer himself, Snoopy, the main carrier of the team. Fire Giant does go that way. And two minutes before the enhanced version, too. So not going to be as impactful, but a lot easier to take at the same time. Absolutely. If that's enhanced, there's no way that Basket and Snoopy can two-man it. But as it stood in the regular version, then they can handle that just between the two of them. And they let Gino clean up the kill on a zero at the same time. Good efficiency by Armada. Homie splitting the map to the left. They're doing the fire giant on the right. And Gino's getting a kill after a team fight they had already won. But it's the right time now for Armada to get aggressive and start to try and separate themselves from Cryptic. They're reaching maximum potential in terms of levels across the field for Armada, which means the longer the game goes, it's easier for Cryptic to catch back up there. And obviously experience gives you bonus levels. Not that alone. It also gives you the extra health ability damage. Man, rough for Meerkat this game. He's two levels down to his own support in this one. Now, Gino has 10 kills on the support Achilles, and he's top damage in the entire game. So he's really not even playing support. He's basically jungle two with some relics that will help out the squad. But to be fair, what Meerkat's doing is becoming the focal point, and that's the good thing. Like, if he's being yeah. focused on being killed, then everybody else is free to do what they want and deal damage themselves. That's right. I mean, Snoopy 2-0 so far. 10 assists for him. He's been able to really reap the benefits of watching Meerkat die. It's a kind of a win-win because they get to make fun of Meerkat for dying a lot. And Snoopy doesn't have to die as much. I'll say and win the game too, but after game one, I can't say that. Baskin with a very good hammer there. Big impactful statement made as he leaps away to safety again. However, Armada now with the Fire Giant 5 going to group up in mid and start to pressure this Tier 1 tower. Won't last long as Gino wraps around the back to push Cryptic a little bit deeper towards their Tier 2. Homie FA shows his face as well. Question is, do Armada keep marching on? They don't have waves on left or right, so 
can't Hot really commit. threaten the tier two on the right hand side, but certainly can continue to try and poke out the opposition here. I mean, they're up 10k. Theoretically, this is a good fight. Not an easy one to poke out, though, with the fact they've got a raw on this team, but a sustain on the backside and a Lotus Crown in that. Extra protections, too. So keeps them topped up a little bit more. So Armada still four members strong here, trying to pressure this mid. Home AFA's just showed himself on the right-hand side. Cryptic could just be quite happy to sit here for now, or even engage if they see a window of opportunity. Yeah, but even keeping Cryptic cooped up underneath this tier two is a win for Armada, right? Because they get to let Homie Fae go and farm the right-hand side. Snoopy's going to farm left. They're spreading out, getting That's solo true. experience in gold, whereas Cryptic's forced to sit here and stick around in mid as a four or five man group. So even if Armada isn't getting anything off the map overall, this is still good for them. Yeah, but the wasting the fire giant is the only except, you know, extra thing that yes. we seeing there that Cryptic are doing, wasting out this fire giant a little bit. Baskin leaps in, in mid, misses the hammer. Homie FA now onto the tier two on the right hand side. Minions are relatively low, but Coke can't really commit on his own there. A little bit concerned, just throws out the Kappa. Tower will stay up for now, but Snoopy now has got to a Phoenix line. Is he going to be able to get this in I time? I mean, so. he does a lot of damage, but I don't think he uses Stim. Probably a good call as Sops is there to clean that up, but that Ooh. opens up the mid tier too easily. Bit of disrespect there. Diesel going to go deep, and Snoopy didn't really worry about it. So I thought for a second he might have had a bit of a, oh no, I've overextended moment, but it's not to be. All the tier two towers down. Armada happy with the result then overall. And I think Cryptic will be as well in the grand scheme of things. They've not lost a Phoenix off this push. No, but they did extend the lead for Armada well beyond that 10k mark, and now up to 14,000. The experience, as you mentioned, becoming less and less relevant, but still relevant for at least a little bit longer with everyone on Cryptic save Diesel not being level 20 quite yet. What I feel like we need in this game now is new music. You know, F thought was talking oh, about was music he? fairly recently, yeah. I think it was with Tolly. Um, talking about the music in the background? Yeah, they were discussing it a lot. Um, more than I wanted to hear, to be honest with you, but... Uh, it's been the music. It's been the. It's it's good music. <laughs> oh, I'm just like. Oh, I guess we like you've said that. I shouldn't continue talking about. It. I was just like we've had that music for this for quite a while. In, we have, in, but it's good. Like in it, competitive play. Yeah, it's good. I don't. We don't change the beat. Something a little bit more. I don't know. Fun. What are you trying to? This be is very dramatic all the time. I know you've been listening to Old Town Road a lot. Is that is that what you want in the no, background? No, not particularly. Unless there's a Guan Yu or a Hachiman in the game. No. That would be sweet. Homie Fa with the blink chase onto Mineral and Mineral under pressure. But oh my goodness, Homie Fa was deleted. The damage from Cryptic was too much. Snoopy now on the run. Meerkat too, and Meerkat has been left on an island in solo lane. You don't need a double tap there, Zero. Don't worry about it. Mineral's got backup for you. Yeah, as that fight was uh, bad. For Armada, the homie just sprints to his death by way of the sonic boom, and the rest of Armada was there to try and help him, but they'll follow the same fate for the most part. Maybe the tanks can get out alive. And now it's only on Baskin, Gino to defend. Baskin gonna return to base. Meanwhile, Cryptic gonna pressure this right hand side. Tier 2 is available, but there are no minions with them. They'll fall back to the jungle. More importantly, Fire Giant, enhanced Fire Giants up. Armada do have control in terms of wards, so they know this is going on. Can Gino and Baskin stop this? Baskin has his upgraded Frenzy. That's kind of your option. It looks like they're calling to give it up, though. I mean, Gino is sitting all the way underneath the tower. Baskin's on the back harpies. Indeed, they are going to just give up this enhanced fire giant. There's great secure there for Cryptic by way of the raw snipe, so your chances of getting in there and getting it are fairly low. And I think that's one thing with the Enhanced Fire Giant that teams have struggled with this year is trying to burst it down at the end with those secures that you're talking about because the protections and the health is just a little bit more impactful than you, you expect it to be at that stage. It's tough, man. You do very little damage, it feels like, for sure. So we've seen a lot of Fire Giant secures go uh, botched to, to say one way for it, but it happens. Raw secure is very, very good with the 1-4 combo. What, I mean, what is stealing it there? Baskin's Shot. hammer should get body blocked. Gino's outer cone of Shield of Achilles. Stay alive, get some extra farm, and, and get ready to defend. I'll tell you what, even though Cryptic have the Enhanced Fire Giant, the Oni Fury was just taken by Homie FA, so this might not be as easy to push as quick as you'd like to see out of Cryptic to try and answer back some of these Tier 2 towers. There's even a chance for Armada to use those to her advantage here and take a fight against them. Yeah, definitely. I think that they should be pushing the right-hand side right now. Give up this Tier 2 in left, give up the Tier 2 in mid. You're not going to be defending that anyways. 
Just make sure your right side Oni wave is putting pressure on the enemy Phoenix, and you need to get it at least halfway down for that to happen. And that's what Snoopy's doing now. Zero in the sky, looking for an opportunity on Baskin or Gino. Not the prime targets he'd be after. He'd love a bit of Mercury, but he won't find it this time. Cole maybe going to pressure up the mid and bring the minions up here with Zero, then to the tier two, and Cryptic going to rotate around. Snoopy's still pushing on that right-hand side. I like it. No reason for him to back quite yet. Now remember, he doesn't have teleport. He has to either back all the way to base or use Living Nightmare. That'll get him directly into the middle of the fight. Seems like a little much. Snoopy does force back zero. The rest of the squad, while wow, Cryptic didn't even get a, the tier two in no. Oni Fury just caused problems, I guess, and also a bit worried about Snoopy's rotation. Yeah, Snoopy's rotation's the big one. I mean, the Oni Wave will take a Phoenix if it was left unchecked and, and really got to walk all the way up. But it didn't really get to build up or anything like that. It was it was an Oni wave that would have done a lot of damage and maybe taken the Phoenix. But it's Snoopy's split push and his ability to rejoin the fight instantly, even faster than that of something like Apollo is uh, is a big deal. Speaking of Apollo, if we see Chernobyl rise up, will we see Apollo do that to try and match it? Because generally, when a god comes into meta, there's always another god that comes along with it to try and answer it, right? King yeah. Arthur, Camazons, same sure. sort of example. Yeah, I mean, we've seen that in the past when Kamaz or when Chernobyl, rather, was, was really, really popular. Apollo got played a lot more. Is that going to be the case in this particular meta? Maybe. Apollo can push leads pretty well when he gets in the duo lane. And with that extra farm rotating in with his global ultimate, could be pretty impactful. I've thought that Apollo's going to come back in the meta a million times. I was like, <laughs> man, when we, you know, when we gave him his knockup back on his ultimate, I was like, oh, he's got to be meta again now. Not quite the case so far, at least. Quick pause coming out then from... Cryptic? No, it's a light from Armada. Not sure why, but we'll be back in the game momentarily. One on one at the moment with Cryptic on the push. Uh, overall, the game doesn't really mean too much because already Armada have qualified. Cryptic just trying to do this for, well, show they can beat him, basically. Show yeah, they've I mean, improved. Yeah, it, it, you want to definitely put Diesel off on the right foot now that he's joined your squad. Cope moving over from jungle to solo, trying to get him back and being comfortable in that role and set him up for some success. Into the base we go. A bit of action missed there because of that pause, but Meerkat under pressure again. Not really missed much there as Zero takes him out and Diesel on the backside survives. Homie FA will also live as Zero got a little bit too deep for comfort at the end of the day. Gets punished for that, but also Cope, who was tanking up the Phoenix the whole time, has also oh, fallen. Sick ult from Homie hits two from all the way downtown. Mineral gets rooted by Snoopy. He has to use his ult to get away. Homie blink. blink only to get mantle stunned right away. Mineral served up. And Homie gonna take it himself. And straight down mid go Armada now. That defense seems to have worked out well. Three members dead, only Sops and Diesel alive. They have their ultimates available here, but I don't know how much they can do against this four-man strong Armada team. Yeah, I think Sops is gonna need to find a big combo over the wall and get Snoopy low or something like that because I think Armada can just walk in and end from this position. I mean, they've got tanks who are healthy enough, I think. No, they decided to back it up. Felt like that was a good opportunity to end there, Graham. I yeah, mean, you had 10 I think, seconds on zero. I think if I'm looking at it from our spectator view here, with knowing Sops and Diesel have his ult, I, I think I'm going to say no to that. Because you're going to clear yeah, the minion wave real quick, right? You catch any of the cows, you really kill Snoopy there, and you're good. Yeah, you have to kill Snoopy. That's the big one. Yeah. But Homie, I mean... Homie's not far behind, actually. Yeah, yeah Homie's got a Rage and a Deathbringer. It would have been close. You know what sure. I mean? I need us to be able to take games that we see professionally and then do a run back and pause it. Replicate it. Replicate it and go, okay, let's see what would have happened. Yeah, right? that would and be just, sweet. And just like, see if it would have worked. Scenarios. Cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a little scenario workout. Maybe that's this is about, about putting about point in SPL level scenarios in game. Man, Yo, that... How about this, right? We, we just take all the best moments of Smite Pro level play throughout the years mm -hmm. and then recreate the moments that everybody lived and wanted to see oh, oh. in a playable fashion. Oh. I called dibs on being Wolfie at last year's uh, mid-season LAN and everyone from Dignitas is coming through the Giannis portals at the same time. That's, okay. what, that's the one I want to do. That's a good one. It's not an easy thing to, to do, is it, really? No, but if I do it, I'm going to feel real cool. You would feel really good about that. I, as long as nobody asks for the Cloud9 matchup against Aquila. Like, uh, that's the only one I'm like, oh, no. Could yeah. you have ended here? Yes. A blind man and a Bronze 5 scrub could have. But that wasn't the case. Funny enough, I'm so experienced doing this now. I can say that without being, like, worried about people getting upset.
Uh, no one will get upset. You're Hindu man. Back in the day, I would have. Yeah. would have been like, oh, how dare he? Cope spinning to win on the spot, but he can't get away from Snoopy. The detonate out there towards the end from Meerkat was good enough. The fights in the jungle still impactful between the two, but at the moment, our model of wrestle control, remember the Phoenix being down in mid, is very important in favor of our model because it's forcing back Cryptic to defend. Sop's going to try and heal everybody up in time to get back to defend this fire giant. I just don't know that they'll get there in time. Snoopy and Homie Faye are shredding with this coerced buff on them. Armada is able to get the enhanced fire giant. And Baskin forced back too. The knock up Gus caused some problems, but the Sash from Mineral didn't as it missed. Gino still front landing with the shell on top to try and keep himself tops up. Ring toss from Mineral slows all the members of Armada down, stops some basin, and Mineral gets a boost. That gets him in range for the Sash onto Snoopy, but then Baskin throws out a hammer to slow that down. Zero to the sky and checks the blue buff area. Meanwhile, Sops will take out Homie FA. Spin on the spot is zero, he's looking for damage, but into the sky, Mineral will take one. Mineral's got Snoopy, but Snoopy's still alive. Aegis there, too late on that beam as well. Snoopy gets the Blood Forge shield and he's going to kill Sops too. Forging the shield from the <laughs> blood of his enemies lets him stand tall. And Baskin still chasing on to Zero. Cope has respawned in mid. If Zero can survive here, there's still a good chance of defense out from Cryptic. Baskin jumping in. Can't thread that hammer through, unfortunately, after the disarm. But Armada is now trying to bring minions down the right. The bad news is the whole wave still around the tier one tower area on that right hand side. Yeah, Baskin is pretty healthy from this position. It shouldn't take Snoopy too long to take care of this Phoenix, though with zero returning might be enough to force them back. <laughs> Gino's actually splitting the left side Phoenix at the same time. I actually don't know what's worse than the player damage, whether it's the Fafnir solo, the Raw, or the Mercury. Like, they're all pretty low for a 36 minute game. Yeah, oh, Mercury can have some trouble sometimes in games like this where everyone's so grouped. Can Armada end? Into the throne they go with Meerkat's ultimate. It won't take too long. The detonate is good, and that'll help bring down Coat Baby. Snoop will get one more kill, and that is the close of the minor league today. Armada are you gonna defeat Cryptic in two games to one. The Snoopy Bog, man, it's too good. Seven and one. That that play where he, his Aegis is just long enough and Sops is just a, a hair too early on the beam, but then he dashes into the wall. Good peel. It, it, it was just kind of doing it all there with that turn of bog. The one thing you'll see in, in games like that from Armada is even if they're messing around a little bit in the landing phase, the picks and bands, their team fights are still fun to watch. Oh, all yes. The time. Yeah, all the time. That's, that's what you can expect. Even when they're picking... Bumba's Kronos, if it's five on five and they're really doing everything to, to try and push down a tower or get a fire giant or something like that, then you can still see that the natural instincts are there for this squad. Definitely. So Armada marching on once more into the next week. Only two more weeks left of play of the minor league before we come to the MSI stage. Same can be said for console two. Let's head to the desk though to break down the end of the day. Armada managed to close that set out despite a rough start to it at the beginning. And Taco, I mean, I, I got to ask you, what was it that stood out for you in them being able to close that game out? Because for me, I saw a ton of excellent individual play from the likes of Snoopy, from, from Meerkat, locking things down. W what stood out for you? I think the set was largely Snoopy and Meerkat. Um, I, I think that Snoopy, especially towards the end of yeah. game three, just popping off on the turn of bog, understanding and trusting his teammates as well. There's a certain level of trust involved, yeah. but Armada was definitely definitely doing everything in their power to try and keep their hunter alive and it pays off in the end as soon as Snoopy gets that blood forge proc and it's important it's insane. that Armada made sure to leave somebody there with a low target HP that way Snoopy could actually get that last hit immediate trust he dashed back out I mean immediate first of all to survive when he landed back down had the Aegis that just barely kept him alive then to come back out of the wall get the double kill had that blood forge he was still rocking and rolling I mean just just, or just really excellent awareness I would say from Snoopy and trust that he'd be able to come in and execute perfectly but it was indeed a team effort I would say from this squad Baskin maybe didn't stand out the way that we normally are used to him in this set overall but the Fafnir undoubtedly had its impact that coerce being onto the Chernobog and onto Homie was definitely ripping through people throughout that game too. I also think that Mineral had a pretty tough time on the Naja because of the fact that Gino just met pressure with even more pressure by taking the Achilles into the support role. It kind of prevents that Naja from looking for that early game snowball opportunity. It was mostly just these two teams kind of exchanging picks. Felt a little bit like Arena for a second there. And honestly, for Armada, it might have actually been Arena, but... It was a lot of <laughs> a lot of fighting that doesn't normally... The kind of fights that don't normally happen, right? Yeah. <laughs> like... Unnecessary. But hey, if it's fun, I, I mean, they're having fun.
Yeah, and sure, and it ended up working out for these guys. Meerkat, you can see, did have a bit of a rough time. Ten deaths is quite a few. He got sat on quite a bit. But you could tell he also got his damage off. I mean, I said going in, it's so early to try and dive this team, or so difficult to try and dive this team, because you're just going to get committed on with the Zeus ultimate. And and you saw it happen to Zero a good amount of times. He would dive in the Thor or onto the Zeus, correctly trying to remove him and just die for it. Yeah, those eight deaths uh, definitely did not come intentionally from Zero. I mean, dying never does in sure. Smite, but... Or you Usually never does in Smite, I sure. can't really say never, but I, I definitely think that the Thor pick didn't really pan out the way that Zero had probably hoped for. I just feel like he had a really tough time trying to find any sort of early game presence because if you want to commit onto Meerkat, okay, well, good luck. We saw what happened in the first <laughs> 10 minutes of that game, I believe, where Zero was actually one of the first deaths. Yes, it was. It just was not easy, I would say, for this Thor trying to lock down anyone here in this game. And Gino, I mean, 23,000 from support, that's not something you normally factor in. That Achilles was absolutely doing work for that squad this time. And Cryptic, I think, to be playing kind of, you know, without Benny Q, with some of the players moved around a little bit and having to make adjustments on the fly against a very good team. I think this was an impressive performance from them. Just obviously, it's really difficult to take down a team like Armada. Let's take a look at those standings. You can bring them up on the screen there for me. And we'll see where Armada is alone and untouched up at the top 9-1. and one. Sanguine will be joining them at the mid-season Invitational at 7-3. and three. Well, with all of those roster changes for, or I shouldn't really say all of them, as much as it was just the one for Diesel coming in now for, for Benny Q. So we might be seeing a little bit more Diesel in, in the weeks to come or phases to come uh, sure. but I, I definitely think that this was a, a strong starting point for them and like we've already touched on our armada and Singwin as the two msi representatives i think that cryptic and space station gold will just see you next time that's right they're looking much more towards phase two here at this point not really gonna be able to make it towards msi obviously this is very valuable time for them though in terms of developing as a team and making sure that they've got the squad that they want and their identities ironed out so that they can get the the phase two that's also important trying to make their way towards getting towards worlds again of course we're looking a little bit far ahead of ourselves they've got a lot <laughs> still to be done even here in the here and now yeah, it's all about looking better for the future, though. And I think that these are definitely teams that have the potential to reach those same standards that have already been put in place. Well, like I said, the teams are trying to fight their way to eventually get towards Hi-Rez Expo. But remember, it's much easier for you all out there at home. Just go to HiRezExpo.com. It's right down there. I'm pointing at it. You can open up a new tab and type it into your window. You get to come here and meet me and Taco at Agro Ryan Bailey. He'll have a drink with you as well. Just come say hi to him. And uh, it'll be really fun to get to meet all your favorite players, coaches, everything like that, and see everything behind the scenes. It's very Cool. It's definitely a lot of fun getting to meet and interact with other parts of the community that you traditionally might not, or some of those guys that you've been saying hey to all along in, in Mixer Chat. I mean, you can <laughs> say true. the same things to them in person now. That's right. There's that guy in Mixer Chat that tells you that you shouldn't be buying boots to skip right out of them. If you think that guy's a fool, come here to Hires Expo. Let him know in person why you think you know more about Smite than him. And one more thing you do to have a little bit of fun is check out that Chibi Bonanza chest as well. A lot of cool skins in there. I think there's a Finner one. That new Giannis one that comes out looks pretty cool as well. A lot of good ones you're going to want to pick up. Arachne. You can't sleep it's on it. It's creepy. You literally can't sleep because it haunts your <laughs> nightmares, Taco. It's horrifying. What are you talking about? I actually don't mind it. I, I, that's one of my favorite TVs that have been done so far. That and the Fenrir. Or, <laughs> the Fenrir one's good, too. Well, to be fair, Cuckoo Khan's is also S tier, with, for sure. They're all S tier, except for the one that won't let you go to sleep at night, which I is the Arachne no one. I have problem sleeping. So that is a cursed image. Stay away from it. Get the other four, though, which is not. It's, it's certainly great. <laughs> Well, at least now we know how you really feel about it, Fish. Yeah, I didn't hold back <laughs> at all. If you do need to be caught up on, though, because I know we have a ton of esports and stuff that we go through, Esports Weekly is tomorrow. Make sure to check that one out. We're all going to be on the show. It's hosted by Agro. Check it out despite that. I promise it's actually a really good show, even though he's the one that's heading it. And we've got a lot of shocking surprises coming your way for tomorrow, oh, too. Right. I'll leave you guys with that much of a cliffhanger. <laughs> you don't want to miss Esports Weekly tomorrow. That's a great point. A lot of different looks going to be coming to the <laughs> SPL, so we'll make sure that we cover all of that stuff for you, bring you all the information that you could possibly want. But I know it's been a long day here with the SML. Thank you so much for sticking with us. For Taco, all the other casters, everybody back there in production, thank you for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. The Smite Minor League, brought to you by Titan Forge, Hyra Studios, INAP, Respawn, Steel Series, Alienware, and Skillshop.